first we're going to start with the clavicle, which has the dubious distinction of being the only long bone that is horizontal in an anatomical position. First of all, you need to determine the sternal end, which is more round, and that is medial, from the acromium end, which is flat, and that is lateral. There is a process which we talked about called the conide process, and that must be facing inferior and posterior. So, inferior and posterior, this is right. Inferior and posterior, this is left. The scapula, the glenoid fossa, must be lateral. The spine of the scapula must be posterior. This is the right, and this is the left. The humerus. The head of the humerus must be medial and proximal, and the olecranon fossa must be posterior. So this is the left, head medial and proximal, olecranon fossa posterior, this is the right. The ulna. The ulna is the medial bone of the forearm. The trochlear notch must be anterior and proximal. And then we can see we have a little indentation here called the radial notch, and that must be lateral. So here we have the trochlear notch, anterior and proximal, and the radial notch is lateral. The styloid process is also going to be medial. We have the radius, and the radius is the lateral bone of the forearm. So the head of the radius is going to be proximal. We have the radial tuberosity, which must be anterior, and the styloid process, which is lateral. So this is the left and this is the right. The head is proximal, the radial tuberosity is anterior, and the styloid process is lateral. Mm -hmm.